All right, in this tutorial, we're going to look at Prose Painter, um, which is a new tool from the folks at Morphogen Studio uh, who run Gambreeder slash Artbreeder, uh, which you might be familiar with. Um, Prose Painter is a really cool little tool that allows you to do some drawing and then also use the clip text to image tooling to sort of alter your images. Um, I'm showing this because I know every time I do a tutorial on text to image or other things, there are always people who are like, I don't understand Colab, I can't use it. Can you show something else to use? And I think this is a great example of a really cool like online web tool that anyone can use uh, as long as you learn some of the tricks and we'll go through some of the tricks in this in this video um, but prose painter has actually been out for i guess a couple couple months now um, just as like a, a github repo so they were nice enough to sort of add a little web tool on top of it so we'll walk through how to do this so uh, head over to prosepainter.com um, and the first thing is you might get a screen like this uh, you might get a tutorial screen that also looks like this um, Wherever you end up, uh, the one thing you want to do is you want to start just with like the new button, which is over here. Um, and you'll see there's a couple images here. So you can either do uh, upload your own image. You can use one of the sample images that they provide. Um, or you can start a blank canvas. Um, so I think for this example, like I think it's fine if we decide just to start with this image. So I'm actually just going to walk through sort of the, the demo example that they sort of use, which is um, let's start with an image. So we'll start with an image of uh, this sort of anime character. Um, and there's a couple tools up here at the top to be aware of. So the first is, um, you know, we're in paint mode, which means we're going to use clip to actually say, hey, in this region, I want to, um, you know, do something. And then there's also a sketch mode and sketch mode allows us to draw. So I actually want to start here because I think it's really important to understand a little bit of how sketch mode can help alter your images. So one of the things is this will just take the underlying image and then you provide some text to it and it's going to alter that image. One of the cool things you can do here is you can actually start by sort of altering your image a little bit up front and using color, like the color will sort of be picked up as, as we do the clip uh, option. So one of their examples is let's just draw some little circles in here. So we'll pick out some bright colors. Let's do like a bright yellow. And we'll just sort of draw some bright yellow circles here. Um, and then let's also do, let's do something that's more like pinkish. So we'll do a pink circle up here. And then let's do maybe some like red. And we'll go a little bit lighter on the red, like a salmon. Okay, so you may be thinking like, what the hell? We've just drawn a bunch of like ugly little things. We can do that in any app. Um, so now we're gonna go back to Prose Paint. And we're actually going to um, go ahead and start to like tell it what part of the image we wanna alter. So if you've done clip to clip image, sort of text to image elsewhere it usually operates on the entire image but what's cool here is we can sort of say like let's do a mask and only alter uh various components so you can go in here and um, start to paint in sort of where you're looking now it's important to know that um there's a lot of sort of blur or uh you know fuzziness to this particular paint tool um, if you want to change that there is brush options here so you can turn the hardness up um, and that'll give us a little bit less of a halo So let's say we just want to do the hair. And maybe we turn the radius down just so we can get sort of the sideburns here. So anywhere that has a sort of pixel grid on it is assumed to be sort of captured as the area that we want to mask in. And now we can actually do the masking. And also I should mention, um, if you go too far, you can also do erase. So we can erase, let's maybe erase a little bit of this forehead. So now we can go back to paint. Um, so now the text section here is what we actually want to operate on. So this works like any clip uh, guided image tool. Um, so let's just sort of say like the demo that uh, I think was shown as the example here is, um, let's just do like a bouquet of flowers. Um, and then let's also um, add in one of our cool little tricks that we know from learning from doing other clip stuff. Um, if you haven't watched my video, I have a video on PixRay, and at the end of that video is a whole series of sort of cool tools you can look at and tips and tricks on uh, sort of optimizing images. So let's go ahead and do watercolor. So what this is gonna do is it's going to sort of take this section of the image and it's gonna optimize for this text. So let's go ahead and now run this. So once I've got my text in here, I'm just go ahead and hit start.
and there you go. So one of the nice things is you can also say like, hey, maybe you want this one too far and I actually want to go back to like a different step, right? So we can go back to step 10 and then hit accept. So that's a really simple uh, version to just get your image out. Um, so let's go ahead and download this. We'll go over here and hit download and there's my image. So that's a really quick example. Um, I want to show one other example that I've sort of run into, which is let's go back here to the beginning and let's go to upload image. Um, and let's just pick, let's pick a letter that I'd work with. So I've been doing this, this sort of experiment where I've been working with typography. Um, so I'll like just start with a letter and then I'll sort of paint in um, what I'm interested in doing. So let's actually uh, do this now. So let's make our paint radius a little bit larger. Let's reduce our hardness again. Um, and let's go ahead and let's just paint in uh, maybe just this section of the letter. So we'll just do, I want, I want to create this space right here. So we'll just do that area. Cool. So now we're just going to hit run. So one of the things that I've noticed is that, particularly with black and white um, images, these need to run a little bit longer. So there's a way to do that pretty easily here. It actually isn't terrible. Um, so many other examples I ran took a little bit longer. So maybe we'll actually just look at one of those examples. Let's go ahead and hit accept. Um, the other nice thing is like because you're doing this in sort of a stepwise fashion, maybe I want that one area to be really strongly um, coherent for, for the text we're providing it. And maybe rest, around the rest of the image, I want something a little bit less. So you can actually do this sort of in different steps, right? So I'm going to run this exact same thing again, but I'm actually going to run it on a slightly larger area. What you'll see now is like the color I've already highlighted is already really strong. And now we're sort of filling this in in more areas. And even the area that I selected is going to slowly get a little bit more color into it. So it's kind of a nice way to get like a little bit of a fading effect. OK, so let's just hit accept. Um, so now we've sort of shown a way to get strength. Now, one of the other things you might find is like, oh, I went too far. I want to like figure out how to like maybe reduce this area again. So you can always go back to uh, your sketch mode and select the white paint. And you could actually go in and just sort of like remove, you know, any of the area you don't want to fill back in, right? So I'm trying to keep this sort of the shape of this letter form here. So I can just roughly go in and sort of remove some of this. And maybe I actually want to say like, hey, I actually want a little bit more color and other things in here. So what I can do then is I can, you know, just come in. Let's clean all this up. It's probably better with a stylus, but whatever. Um, go back in and let's just do a really light yellow color, you know, like this. Let me switch my brush options a little bit larger. Maybe we can sort of paint this color in a little bit more here. And we'll go back to Pro's Paint. Cool. So now let's run this one more time. Um, I might be over... Actually, you know what? Here's another thing I want to do. I actually want to erase this area because I'm kind of going a little too heavy here. If you over-optimize some of these sections, they get to look a little bit gnarly. So let's just go in and remove some of this. Just a little bit lighter and not as strong in those areas. Cool. So let's hit start. And so a cool thing you'll see is like where I painted yellow, it's starting to pick up some of the watercolor tone and beginning to add in um, some additional detail there. Go ahead and hit accept. So I'm gonna try this one more time. Um, I had an issue with what was it? It was um, rainforest um, tropical paradise uh, trending on art station. Oops, and if I can spell art station. Um, so one thing you'll also notice is. And maybe maybe the Studio Morphogen folks are listening. Um, if you make this section too tall, like let me just double this. Um, you actually can't paint underneath this area because this is sort of uh, captured. So it's still a day one tool. You know, there's still some some early stuff to to work on. So just be aware it takes a little bit of you know getting used to and trying to operate around. So um, let's go ahead and clear this out and let's just select a new area with paint. Let's select this section here. And let me just select a whole bunch of stuff. Also, if you go off screen, you will uh, sort of like lose your cursor. So if I do that, like you have to come back over and click. So you can't, it'll be, be a little careful when you're like kind of painting in large areas. 
probably just make the brush bigger and that would be just as easy. I feel like Bob Ross, I'm like talking through painting my pretty little picture here. Okay, cool. So that's now covered. Let's let's go ahead and hit start. So see in this example, um, I'm getting a lot of my green, but my black is not really filling out too quickly. And this is another case of where I probably just want to go through multiple steps um, and sort of, you know, continue to iterate on this. So I'm just going to hit accept. And, you know, I'm just going to run this exactly the same again. So um, if you've done anything with the with a collab thing, you know, you've got iterations available to you. This is kind of a hacky way to get to iterations. I think they just sort of say like 30 seems like enough. And if you want more, you just run it again and again and again. And so now you're seeing like now that I've run it more, I'm starting to get more definition in certain areas. Um, and my black is starting to disappear. But what I think is cool here is um, you still get a strong definition between the black and the white, right? Like even here, you can still definitely make out an edge. So let's go and let's run this one more time. And now we've got a lot of definition in this area, maybe too much, like maybe I'm starting to lose some of the shape here. Um, and again, this might be a case where I go back in and maybe paint some stuff out and then rerun this again. Um, so I think this is a really cool tool. I'm really excited to see, you know, you could have done this with Colab using um, the GitHub repo, but the challenge is, is like, you have to go and like make your updates in one thing. You have to build a little like widget that draw allows you to paint stuff in collab which is like very painful um but this is really nice in that now there's an interface that allows me to directly interact with my image and run these tools and it sort of like it shortens the feedback loop in a way that i think you're going to see some really cool things that people can make with this um so i hope you learned a little bit with this lesson i think there's some really cool opportunities here i played with this for about 10 minutes 15 minutes before recording this tutorial so i'm, I'm guessing there's even more cool things you can do um especially around the sketch section like you can probably sketch out you know, the beginnings of your own shapes and then use the tool to sort of paint them in and fill them in. Um, so I think there's a lot of cool things to play with. Definitely am interested to sort of see what people make with this. So um, if you make something cool, let me know. Um, drop a note either in the YouTube channel or on my Slack. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this tool and really excited to see where else Morphogen Studio goes with things. Um, so with that, that's it for today. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.